this video, I'd like to give you a demonstration of how to manage and track your orders using order tickets. Order tickets are a mechanism in Quant Connect which allows you to update and cancel and get the current price of all the fields. It's important to note that order tickets are not the order object. We've separated out these two things in the Lean algorithmic trading engine to make updating your orders safe. The best way to think of this is that you give our engine an order and then we give you back an order ticket, like a coat ticket so you can keep track of your order, get its fields, update it and cancel it if you need to. Every time you submit an order, you get an order ticket back from the method. This is important because in real trading, the orders can be updated at any time. And so it's not a synchronous operation. We can't control when an order is filled. For example, it's impossible to cancel an order when it's already filled. And we manage all this behind the scenes for you. And you just can use the update and cancel methods as you'd like. We're going to look at order tickets using an example algorithm that I whipped up before. Here we save all the tickets into private variables in the algorithm. And then in on data, when the first bar comes through, we place a bunch of orders. It's important to note here that we haven't tried to save the, the order ticket for the market order. It's more or less meaningless because the market order should be filled instantly. And there's no way for you to update it or cancel it. You can, however, save it to get the filled price of the market order if you'd like. Another important point here about the market order is that by default, this is a synchronous operation. By the time you get to the very next line of code, this asset should be in your portfolio. By default, we'll wait for up to five seconds. So if the market order takes longer than five seconds to fill, you'll move on to the next line. But by default, for most people's purposes, that'll fill instantly. With our system, you can also tell it to be true here. And that means that it's in a synchronous operation. This means that if you want to place a thousand market orders and you don't want to wait for five seconds or however long it takes your brokerage to fill, you can just tell it to be sent asynchronously, and this will send all of them without waiting at all. After that, we've placed a limit order for 100, and we've placed that limit order at 10% below the current price. Here you can see we've tagged the order, the limit order, and you can put any text field you want here. In the same way here, we've done a stop market order, and we've put for the same asset with minus 100 shares, and we've put that for below the current market price. At the moment, that's 5% below the market price. You probably want to do it this way for a stock market order. And if you're doing a short stock market order, you would flip it. So you would buy to cover and you would put the close price above your current market price. And here, to, as the last demonstration, we've got a stop limit ticket. And here you can see we've placed an order for minus 100 at 10% below the market price. And the limit price at which we would fill at is 20% below the market price here. Down here in the on end of day method, we're just saying that if there are no tickets set, just return. But otherwise, we'd like to plot some of these prices to see what's going on inside the algorithm. Here we're plotting the price of the SPY. And then here we're using the get method on the order ticket to get the current stop price of the stop market ticket. So here we're plotting the stop price and we're using the get field, that stop price from the order ticket. And in the same way, we're doing the same thing for the limit ticket, and we're getting the limit price on that stop limit ticket. In your algorithm, you can override the on order event method. This method gives you events for anything that happens with your orders. The first one, when you submit the orders, you get a submitted event. The submitted event by default is a fill quantity of zero, so we can just skip that one. We provide this helper method, transactions.getOrderById, and you can see in the order event here, it's got the order ID and we can actually fetch the order object and then put some debug information here about what order was filled, the symbol, the quantity, and then the order event direction that the order was placed in. So if we just run a quick back test, we can inspect this and see how it works. And as you can see, the back test runs quickly and then we've placed four trades as we'd expect. The four trades we placed, the first one was the market order and we've got all the tags here for the different order, orders we've placed. The market order was executed at 76, and then we placed the limit order at 10% below that. So that's the $69 market order filling there. And then here we've placed a stop market order for 5% below, so there's the $72.50 here. And here's the stop limit order for 20% below the, the market price here, so that's $61.38. To help understand this, we've plotted this in the order tickets chart. So here you can see in blue the asset price, the SPY price, and we opened up at 76, 
And then here you can see the stop price and the limit price. And the stop price was filled there. And so the line stopped moving. And then the limit price continued for a few more dollars here as we've set it to 10% below the market price versus 5% for the stop market. So you can see here it's continued for a few more dollars and then the limit price has also stopped. So that allows you to set different stop and order types. We also have market on open and market on close orders. The only key things to note about them is that you must submit them at least two minutes before market open for interactive brokers and two minutes before market close. Otherwise, it'll be registered for the next trading day. The last thing that I wanted to demonstrate was a case where you might want to take a profit order and then update it. So a common case here might be that you have a limit ticket and you want to take a limit profit order. So here we'll set the price to be above the current market price. And here we're aiming for a profit target of 20%. And then at that point, we will sell the 100 shares that we've just bought. And here's our take profit limit order. We don't need the charts here. And then finally, we just want to update the order price. Here I've scheduled every day that the SPY is trading at 1 p.m. Let's update the limit price to be 99% of what it was. So it's going to constantly move down from the 20% target. So here we've got to get our limit ticket. And we want to update it. And you can update things using this update order fields class and you pass in all the items that you want to, to update on the order, and then we update that asynchronously. And then we just need to update the on end of day method to the different tickets that we're trying to track, and then we can run the back test. So when we run the back test, we see that the equity chart actually weathered out the entire crash. So if we go to the order tickets to get a better idea, we can see that we started the limit price far above the market, and then we moved it down too slowly each day so that we never actually hit the limit price. So let's update that so that we get a better fill. We want to make this hit within a week or two so that it doesn't completely wipe out our portfolio during a crash. So that should update roughly 10 times faster. Once the back test is complete, you can see here that the portfolio equity leveled out around February, which is what we expected. We can see here that we've updated the limit price and that it hits around February 2nd. And that's where the equity stops moving. So there's an example of using the update field on a limit order. You can use the same principle on the stop market and stop limit orders. And you just up need to update different fields here. So we've got the stop price, the limit price. You can also update the quantity and the tag. The tag is the message that is, lives on the order. You can see the tags here, that the last price that we updated to was $72.30. That's a demonstration of the order tickets methods. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, please feel free to ask in the forums or in the comment section below. Thank you.